Welcome to the Harper Classroom. I'm Dr. Harper. This video is Project Management, Earned Value Analysis, Concepts, and Mechanics. You are managing a six-month project with seven activities. During your project, is your project over budget, under budget, ahead of schedule, behind schedule? At project completion, will your project be over or under budget, ahead of schedule, or behind schedule? These questions and others will be addressed within Earned Value Analysis. Let's start with the introduction. A six-month project consists of seven activities with a cost baseline or budget where the costs are distributed over time. At the end of March, an earned value analysis is performed. The earned value analysis at the end of March reports the percent work completed of each activity and the actual cost of work performed in the project. The percent work completed of each activity is given by this table. It's reported at the end of March that activities 1 and 2 are 100% completed, activity 3 is 60% completed, and activities 4 through 7 are 0% completed. But the schedule indicates activity 2 is not scheduled to be completed till the end of April, but the EVA reports that activity 2 is 100% completed at the end of March. Since the work completed is greater than the work scheduled, the project is ahead of schedule. The actual cost of work performed in the project is also reported. The actual cost reported is $12,500. But the total estimated cost at the end of March from the cost baseline is $8,000. Since the actual cost of $12,500 is greater than the estimated cost of $8,000, the project is over budget. So from the EVA project report at the end of March, an earned value analysis should indicate the project is ahead of schedule and over budget. So let's see how this is done within the concepts and mechanics. This is the template we will use in performing the earned value analysis. The top is the cost baseline. The middle are the three EVA values at the end of March. The bottom represents the six metrics determined from the three EVA values used in interpreting the results of the earned value analysis. Let's start with a cost baseline. First, we have the definition of planned value, the budgeted cost of work scheduled, the amount of cost allocated to an activity in the budget or baseline. Step 1. Sum the planned value of every row. This is the planned value, or PV, of an activity, the activity cost within the project. Step 2. Sum the planned value of every column, the planned value, or PV, of a time period. This represents the cost flow through the project, and this is a very common profile of cost flow where it increases and decreases through a project. Step three is sum all the planned values of the project. This is the total PV of the project, the total budget, or the total cost of the project. Often this is used as an adjective, a six-month, $25,000 project. Step four, determine the earned value of the EVA the budgeted cost of work performed. The earned value of an activity is determined by multiplying the planned value by the percent completed of the activity. The arithmetic is given here. This represents the earned value of each activity at the end of March. The sum of the earned values is the earned value of the EVA, and this is the first EVA value. Step five is the actual cost of the EVA, the actual cost of work performed. The total direct and indirect cost of the project to date reported in the EVA report at the end of March, and that $12,500 represents the second EVA value. Step six, the plan value of the EVA, the total plan values during the time period of the EVA, which is the end of March. We sum all the plan values that 8,000 is the third EVA value. Now that we have the three EVA values, we can determine the six metrics used in interpreting the results of an earned value analysis at the end of March for the six-month $25,000 project. Recall from the project report for this project at the end of March, an earned value analysis should indicate the project is over budget and ahead of schedule. So from the three values, they should determine an over budget and ahead of schedule project at the end of March. So let's start with the cost variance, which is the difference between the earned value and the actual cost, where the equation is given here 
and the arithmetic is given here and here. A positive cost variance, where the earned value is greater than the actual cost, is interpreted as under budget because we've spent less than we've earned. A negative cost variance, where the earned value is less than the actual cost, is interpreted as over budget since we have spent more than we've earned. In this case, we have a negative cost variance, which indicates over budget. Next is the schedule variance, which is the difference between the earned value and the planned value, with the equation and the arithmetic given here and here. A positive schedule variance, where the earned value is greater than the planned value, is interpreted as ahead of schedule. You've earned more than you plan to earn. A negative schedule variance, where the earned value is less than the planned value, is interpreted as behind schedule. You've earned less than you plan to earn. In this case, we have a positive schedule variance that indicates ahead of schedule. So now that we have a negative cost variance and a positive schedule variance, that indicates over budget and ahead of schedule. Next is the cost performance index, where the earned value is divided by the actual cost, with the equation and arithmetic given here and here. When the cost performance index is greater than 1, or the earned value is greater than the actual cost, that's interpreted as under budget since we've spent less than we've earned. The cost performance index less than 1, when the earned value is less than the actual cost, is interpreted as over budget since we've spent more than we've earned. In this case, the cost performance index is less than 1, which indicates over budget. Next is the schedule performance index, which is the earned value divided by the plan value. Equation and arithmetic given here and here. When the schedule performance index is greater than 1, the earned value is greater than the plan value, that's interpreted as ahead of schedule, since we've earned more than we plan to earn. The schedule performance index less than 1 is when the earned value is less than the planned value, interpreted as behind schedule, since we've earned less than we plan to earn. In this case, our schedule performance index is greater than 1, which indicates ahead of schedule. So in this case, the cost performance index is less than 1, the schedule performance index is greater than 1, which indicates over budget and ahead of schedule. So the cost and schedule variance and the cost and schedule performance index indicate the project is over budget and ahead of schedule. Also, a negative variance will always correspond to an index less than 1, and a positive variance will always correspond to an index greater than 1. So the cost and schedule variance and the cost and schedule performance index indicate the condition of the project at a current point in time during the project, in this example, at the end of March, which is the EVA. The estimated cost at completion and the estimated time at completion estimate the condition of the project at a future point in time, in this example, at the completion of the project. So let's start with the estimated cost at completion. The EVA at the end of March indicates over budget, since the variance is negative and the index is less than 1. If this overspending pattern continues to project completion, then the total cost of the project will be more than the $25,000. How much more? Well, the estimated cost of completion is the total cost of the project, which is the $25,000, divided by the cost performance index, resulting in $31,250. So if overspending continues to completion, the estimated cost of the entire project would be $31,250. Next, estimated time at completion. The EVA at the end of March indicates ahead of schedule. Since the schedule variance is positive and the performance index is greater than 1, if this overproduction pattern continues to project completion, then the total time of the project completion will be less than 6 months. How much less? The estimated time of completion will be the time of completion, 6 months, divided by the schedule performance index, resulting in 4.8 months. So, if overproduction continues to completion, the time estimated for the project will be a total of 4.8 months. So, the earned value analysis at the end of March indicates that the project is over budget and ahead of schedule. But if the current spending and production patterns continue to completion, the cost at project completion is estimated to be $31,250 instead of $25,000, and the total time to project completion is estimated to be 4.8 months instead of 6.0 months. 
So this earned value analysis at the end of March indicates that this project is ahead of schedule because the schedule performance index is greater than one and it's over budget since the cost performance index is less than one. But the earned value analysis can be performed at multiple times during a project. So the project manager, along with the project team, can monitor and control a project to successful completion. So this ends project management, earned value analysis, concepts and mechanics. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.